Hello, my absolutely beautiful Cancerian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2021. We're Cancer this month. We've got the outer planets in a serious amount of retrograde energy. In fact, they're all in retrograde, which means that the external things, the external speed of things is going to stop running at us so fast. Instead, we actually get to deal with what is already on our plate, what is already on the table. We have seen it. And into that, we will also welcome Mercury into retrograde as well. And that is not a go hide under the rock symbol. As a matter of fact, it is actually a fortunate energy where we get to review some things. Now, I've got a video out there about what to do, what not to do, what to think about what not to think about during Mercury retrograde to provide a little bit of guidance for you, especially if you are new around here. Speaking of which, whether you are new or you've been here 10,000 times, if you like this kind of content, if you like astrology, hell, if you just like me, please push like and subscribe on this channel because I would love to bring you into the community and keep journeying down the word world, the road of astrology with you, okay? All right, Cancer, let's do it. Let's get into what's going on this month. Now, first and foremost, Mercury is taking that retrograde this month, but it is a four-part series. So I really want to highlight these four parts so you can be paying attention to them during this next couple months. Now, on the 6th, we're going to see Mercury move into its pre-retrograde shadow energy. Okay, so what this means is that Mercury is going to get to 10 degrees of Libra, and then it is still moving forward, right? But it is going to start to kind of move forward really slowly. So it begins a slowing of energy. And what that brings our attention to is 10 degrees of Libra in your chart. What's happening in this area? Do you have points? Do you have planets? Do you have angles that are at this point? Because you're going to start to be given a clue as to what you're paying attention to, not just Libra qualities, but specifically what is happening for you around 10 degrees of Libra. Then, Mercury will keep crawling forward, get to 25 degrees of Libra, and actually take the retrograde, so station at that point. Then in October, it's going to get back to 10 degrees of Libra, and it's going to station direct. But then it needs to come to the post-retrograde shadow, which is where it unpacks all of the information it has learned from the beginning of the retrograde cycle. So from September all the way until November 2nd, where we will officially leave this Mercury retrograde shadow. So I want you to be thinking about that as this comes up this month between 25 degrees of Libra and 10 degrees of Libra. What is coming to your attention? Okay. All right, now also on the 6th, we're going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Virgo. So this is brilliant because a new moon gives you the opportunity to plant your seeds of intention, begin something new, give something a fresh start, a fresh reality, a fresh perspective, allow the things that can't travel with you to fall out. Because when you say no to something or when something doesn't fit anymore, the universe never leaves a vacuum. It never leaves a hole. It is going to pull something in there so that you do have a fresh start or a fresh perspective in this area. Now for you, Virgo lights up the third house space. The third house is about communication. It's about learning. It's about teaching, websites, books, writing that book falls in here. Um, the things that are on your mind, negotiations and contracts. I think about housing, not in terms of the house, but maybe you're buying a house, you're selling a house. You want to take a small trip. You want to do a little ceremony around something. This happens in the third house area. So what are you starting? What is the fresh beginning that is coming into this area? And even if it's something that's already kind of been on your table and now you're feeling prepared in this next four weeks to make some decisions, this moon aligns brilliantly with some Uranian energy. So it could be like, boom, kaboom, pop, right? I'm ready. Uh, I feel like there's electricity in this area. I've been innovated in this area. I feel surprisingly ready to make some kind of decisions. You could definitely see that coming from this particular moon quality. Now, when we get to the 10th, we are going to see Venus move into the energy of Scorpio. This will light up for you, Cancer, this fifth house space of play, of pleasure, children, self-expression, conception, and this is not just conception of people, but it's conceptions of ideas as well. What about, you know, maybe I do want to take this and turn it into a hobby. Maybe I do need to say this thing. Ah, uh, an expression of love. Now, of course, it's September. If you have children, 
you could definitely have a lot going on in the arena of children. So keep that in mind here. But Venus traveling through Scorpio is actually considered to be in detriment because she can't just be as fancy free as she'd like to. But instead of being afraid of the detriment or afraid of Scorpio energy, and sometimes it gets a bad rap, instead, Venus coming into Scorpio is bringing the harmony. She is bringing a beauty. And this is a position of passionate beauty passionate harmony where in this fifth house area you are willing to do and to see and to have an honest psychological rearrangement to what's going on in this area so that it can be the best so that the power struggle can be let down so that you can move and burn and create that poetry create that connection with your children with a passion that you don't do when Venus is not in Scorpio now it can have the other sides as well you can have a love interest that comes your way and it is challenging it feels karmic it can have these heavier feels but this area Whatever comes to your table between September 10th and October 7th is about your transformation. It is about transformation, you phoenix in this area, okay? Now, as we get to the 14th, we see Mars move into the energy of Libra, which is an inter interesting configuration because Mars is in the energy of Libra, which is ruled by Venus. Venus is in the energy of Scorpio, which is co-ruled by Mars. So we find these two planets both uncomfortable in the signs that they're in, but in mutual reception. So what that creates is an ease of these two, where it's like, ugh, I do not like coming to this house. I don't like coming to your house either. But we have a respect for each other. So it creates an ease in their discomfort. Now Mars moving into the energy of Libra brings the fourth house energy moving. It's moving and grooving. You've got Mars here. So home, family, real estate, property, if there's been any issues with the family or there's been issues with the home, things like that, Mars is going to use some conflict to get those things broken up and, and, and moving forward. But also, Mars in Libra becomes a multitasker. So what you may be doing are things for you and things for the family, right? Libra is an air sign, which means it's moving in more than one direction at a time, where traditionally Mars likes to just go forward or go in this direction. So now you have access to action, to desire that is based on relationship, doing more for just yourself, and maybe you're also including doing it with other people. Now, for some of you Cancers, I do think that this is an energy where you're creating a partnership. You're taking an action. We've just had a moon in the third house. Are you getting married? Are you buying a house together? What are you doing with someone in the family or that creates family? Because it's definitely an energy with Mars and his desire. Where you will feel comfortable or where you may feel your desire pulled towards is I want family. I want to create family. I want to do something in this house. If you did need to do any kind of renovations, changing the house around or anything like that, this would be great as soon as Mars gets into Libra, okay? On the 20th, we're going to see a full moon happening. This will be at 28 degrees of Pisces. Now, this for you is going to light up the ninth house space. Publishing, marketing, broadcasting, international travel, education, um, faith, falls in here, things that have to do with immigration, have to do with foreign languages, all of those things light up in this particular area. So at the full moon, it says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to create a shift. Something needs to happen. There's a pivot that needs to happen in order for this area to carry on. Now, You've got the sun lighting up down here in the third house. I'm making decisions. I'm having conversations. I've got some things on my mind about getting organized, signing contracts, getting my priorities straight. But then I've got a heart that's over here, right? Like my insides are over here in the ninth house. So there's this opposition between the third house and the ninth house. In an opposition, you want to bridge the gap. Find a solution in the middle that speaks both to that smaller mind of the third house of, yes, this is where I'm at, but also this is where my heart is at. What actions, what decisions can you make to release the opposition that find 
you having middle ground. I think that this is really a beautiful energy to work with, okay? On the 22nd, we're going to see the sun move into the energy of Libra. So now the fourth house is lit. The party is real. You've got light, heat, life, and vitality moving through this fourth house. So changes, conversations, movement from the family are things that you're really going to be taking on at this time. Now, not to mention, this is also a fellow cardinal energy. So you find yourself in the autumn equinox. We're starting a new season. This is exciting, Cancer. Give yourself a hug. Hug your fellows. We've made it through another season. So we will feel the energies shift a little bit here. It's time to be at the beginning of these next things in our life. We have wound down with Virgo. Now it's time for some fresh starts, okay? And then just a few days later on the 27th, we'll see Mercury station into that um, retrograde energy here in the fourth house as well. So where the sun and Mars and Mercury have brought things into the home, you've made decisions with the family, you've resolved conflict or had conflict, depending on how that looks. Whatever it is around the home energy, now Mercury will back up the way up to 10 degrees of Libra and you can mentally assimilate, reevaluate, go back over decisions, conversations that you've had or that they need to be made. You know, if you need to go back over travel plans, are you trying to get that? Are you trying to move? And the outside planets and the outside world is making that hard or interesting. Do you have something going on where you're supporting a parent or something like that? And now Mercury will give you space to go back over it and make sure you have the most aligned, clarified decision-making processes at your fingertips. So I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I wouldn't be surprised at all, Cancer, with Mercury in Libra if you don't physically or at least mentally, I would even say in your dream life, go back to someone who is a Libra in your life, even if you're thinking about them, to heal that area or some Somebody ruled by Venus in your life may show up and have some prominence in some way, okay? All right, my beautiful Cancers, I think it's an absolutely brilliant month. We get another one to keep trying, to keep learning, to keep growing, and to stay in community with each other. So like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you're checking, checking out your weekly videos so you can see what's going on all week long. Slow down, bring yourself into the day, and embody those energies as well. All right, my beautiful friends, I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.